What's up guys, I'm back with another example video. Today we'll be revisiting the INFJ personality type, looking at Diane Kruger. She's a German actress. You might know her from like Tarantino's Inglorious Bastards, or probably her most famous role as uh, playing the character of Helen of Troy is quite the role to play. Uh, she's not as famous as some of the other actors and actresses I've typed, but she's pretty good. So hope you enjoy. Okay guys, so before we get into the analysis, let's just quickly go over the function stack and some stuff to look out for. So first lot and I look for conceptualization, looking for that bigger picture, kind of how things are all come together um, through synthesis, looking for that de deeper meaning and that global encompassing unifying um, mode of perception. Second slot FE, harmony, considering others, talking about others, giving attention towards others, group dynamics. Uh, six slot FI, before I get into this, let's remember that the sixth is the strongest out of this shadow stack. However, the nature of the sixth is something that's, on um, you know, unstable, high voltage, something that can't necessarily be trusted because it's unbalanced in a sort of way. However, you know, six slot FI, those deep uh, subjective uh, values, that moral internal system, deep emotions that FI deals with, um, it's going to be there. However, I, INFJs and ISFJs will almost always want to take this information and relate it to some sort of collective, uh, you know, us group, what's the best for all of us sort of a thing. Third slot TI, it's kind of like um, troubleshooting, autocorrect, you know, with words, it can make uh, INFJs like pretty picky with what, what the exact word they want to say is. Uh, seven slot TE, it can be like an aversion or an irritance towards things that TE symbolizes or resembles. So like structure being very uh, scientific in, a, in your approach, mentality. Uh, they can have problems or just be uninterested in like economics, business, politics, things or systems with a structure. And um, four slot SE, since we're dealing with NFs, NFs will generally have these like wavy hand movements. Uh, four slot SE, we can also say that um, it's like willpower, knowing how to um, push yourself forward, how to bring things into manifestation. And um, with hand movements again, four slot SE, it's kind of like very slow and graceful hand movements. So the SE is there, but it's just kind of inhibited slower than let's say like first slot SE. Anyways, that's what to look out for. So as usual, um, we'll start off, I'll start off by asking a few questions and then we'll open it up to the audience. Um, so thank you very much for coming this evening. Um, your breakout Hollywood role uh, was as Helen of Troy, um, I suppose what's how most people would say, uh, one of history's most iconic beauties. <laughs> what do you think about the claims that Hollywood puts unnecessary pressure on women to embody high standards of, our, of attractiveness? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, it's um, it's like anything. I think it's not just Hollywood. I think it's the fashion industry. I think it's uh, what we as a society have um, elected as what is considered beautiful and what is not. And I guess they're feeding into that. Um, as for Helen of Troy, you know, it was, I mean, a lot of people were not ecstatic with my choice. They were like, why would Helen of Troy be blonde and blue eyed, you know? So the standards for beauty around the world are very different. Um. So we can see NIFE right off the bat at the start of this interview. NI looking at what we as a society think through this like global encompassing singular view. And also FE is that objective collective, what others think, what others feel about this and this idea of beauty. I guess maybe they thought it was the most, you know, generically acceptable person for that role. I don't know. You know, I was a very young actress starting out. I They put me through the ringer. I had to send in, I don't know how many tapes and go to America, I don't know how many times to do tests, screen tests. And then they made, they made me gain 12 pounds. So I, I guess in a way they thought, you know, I was too skinny and that's different what 
what people think is attractive these days. Um, so as I said, you've just returned from Cannes. Um, the film festival hit the headlines this week because of the allegations that Cannes <coughs> was turning away women for not wearing heels. How do you think this situation reflects on the festival and indeed on the industry as a whole? Well, I've heard that I, you know... I know okay, so this... Well, that, that NI sigh, as I like to call it, it's just something that I've seen time and time again with people with that value NI. Uh, the reason why I think this happens is because NI, it's a slow function, it's a deep function, and it really works with like low resolution uh, imagery, pictures, symbolism, and it just needs time to put that stuff together, uh, you know, to process it and put it into words, usually in a singular narrative. Nobody's ever told me not, I can't go on the red carpet, but you know, it's just like, I mean, it's like anything. If you show up to a black tie event dressed in white jeans and a white shirt, they're going to turn you away from it, you know, just because they have very specific <coughs> codes. As a general reflection, do I think it's okay to turn away women because they want to wear flats? Of course not. But I think I'm hoping that the Cannes Film Festival was just making a reflection on what is an acceptable dress code on the red carpet. And indeed, as I said before as well, um, you are promoting your new film, Disorder. Uh, mm. Would you mind just telling us a bit about, about the film? Uh, well, Disorder is a movie about um, a soldier who's coming back from Afghanistan who has uh, post-traumatic stress syndrome and he is hired to protect me and my child and um, shit happens. <laughs> <laughs> No teasers or spoilers coming our way. Just go see the film, basically. Uh, well, that, that, that's the that's the that's the setup. Yeah. So yeah, I guess. So you've done this a few times, I, I <laughs> um, And how is it that you go about choosing the roles that you eventually end up playing? Um, it's mostly instincts, you know. I, I mean, I obviously have a team around me that um, tries to advise me on things, but um, I also I'm a little bit specific because I work in different languages. I went to drama school in France, so I try to make a French movie per year. I'm German originally. So that's still high up on my wish list to actually make a movie in German. Um, and so I, you know, it's, it's sometimes it's a, it's a co-star, a director, um, sometimes a country, you know, cool location. And is there one role that you really wish you could have played? Mm. There's been movies that I wanted to be in. Um, I remember a couple years ago, there was a film called The German. Um, and I, <laughs> I really tried to be cast, and they hired an Australian to play the part. Clearly, that movie didn't do well. I wonder why. So, <laughs> But I really wanted to be in that film, yeah. <laughs> I want to replay this last clip so we can look at the visuals again. And what I'm about to say, it's a very general, broad statement. So take it with a grain of salt. But most of the time, when you're talking to ends or intuitives, their eyes will wander a lot. Um, usually poor eye contact, and that's because when they're searching for an answer, they'll be looking at things that aren't there, like physically, in reality. They'll be looking at symbols and images and stuff, looking for patterns, because that's just how they process information. Whereas sensors will be more concrete, you know, like down to earth, realistic, more receptive and respectful in terms of eye contact. As far as FE, it's an extroverted function. It wants to externalize itself. It wants to go outwards. So with facial expressions, FE, it'll usually be like a horizontal east-west, west-east kind of outwards facial expressions, very objective. When you're talking to an FJ, usually you know if they're happy, they'll look happy. If they're sad, they'll look sad. Very easy, very objective. Um, and they'll usually have like a banana smile, you know, a banana grin, like outwards, horizontally, that kind of a thing. Hi. Hi. Um, did you always know you wanted to be an actress or did you pursue something else before going into movies or television? Um, I didn't. I, um, I come from a very, very small village in Germany barely 2,000 people, and that just wasn't something that people did. Um, I grew up doing a lot of ballet, and I studied with the Royal Academy for a little bit. So looking back now, I realized that from a very young age, I learned to express my emotions. I was a very 
don't want to say angry, but perturbed young person. Um, and it, uh, music and, and dancing allowed me to express those things and actually be rewarded for it, which when I quit my, um, ballet, I realized how much of that I was missing and how, how pent up I was becoming in my emotions and didn't know how to deal with them. And so I was very um, unhappy for a while in my life, not knowing what I wanted to do because clearly I wasn't going to be an academic like you are. And uh, so I was searching really for, you know, where my life was going to take me. Um, okay, guys, it's just so important. Um, that's what 6 slot FI looks like. I think perturbed is the perfect word, especially for FI. Something that's confusing, agitating. At the same time, it's powerful. Uh, FI is like deep introspection, authenticity, creativity. It's, it's one of the reasons INFJs and ISFJs can be a bit rebellious or like secretive, especially when it comes to what they feel on an emotional level, on a subjective level. And this is why I think one of the best keywords for the sixth slot is overwhelming. It can overwhelm you. It can get the best of you at times, you know, but more often than not, it's right. Hi, um, I wanted to ask, was there an actor you especially enjoyed working with? Or is there an actor you really would like to work in um, the future with? Uh, well, I just did a movie with Brian Cranston. I have to say, he was pretty, he was pretty amazing. Probably one of the <laughs> best actors I've ever worked with. Um, I loved working with Michael Fassbender. He was pretty amazing. And it's always great when you're in a film and you, he was kind of brand new when we did Inglorious Bastards and it's, he stood out so much and it's kind of amazing to see what's happened, you know, to his career and his life. And there's, I don't know, there's so many. I would love to work with Kate Blanchett and more women, you know, because we tend to be, certainly in Hollywood, there's 10 male roles and then one female role, so you don't tend to work a lot with other women. You spoke very briefly about a, a film you're co-producing. Mm. How, how do you find life behind the camera um, having been in front of it for so long? It's really fun. It, it takes a long time, you know, developing things. Um, we're developing, or I'm, me and my team are developing a mini series about Hedy Lamar. I don't know if you knew who she was. She was an actress from the 40s, but who's also an inventor. She invented frequency hopping, so very smart lady, totally crazy, um, you know, makes for a great show, hopefully. Uh, and it's, it's, it's hard, you know, you have to use sort of the engine to get it going, you know, so you're pushing the rock up the hill. But I think it's, it's important for us women to generate um, material for ourselves because it's worse than ever, I think, in Hollywood that um, it's pretty dire to when you look at the content of, of films there and, and what our roles in those, in those films are. And so what do you think it takes? How will we get to a place where I think we all want to be? Where there is well, I think it takes women that are in a position to make a difference, to really fight for it, um, to really stand united, to really um, generate our own content. I think with television and you know networks like Netflix or Cinemax, there's a lot more opportunities for content. Um, and all it takes is a few really big heads for the stu big studio bosses to see that you know women actually do go see movies and that they want to see women who do other things than go shopping <laughs> <laughs> going back to ni there's this sort of visionary quality to it a tendency to look towards the future perceive a way forward through synthesis of what is known and what is experienced and especially with FE, it'll color that vision in a sort of ethical, axiological perspective of what can be changed. So it's important to remember that NI operates on an axis with SE. That's easy to forget. Uh, SE is the function that wants to go out and do stuff, push forward, have the experience. It's actually SE that is providing NI with that data so it can extrapolate a deeper meeting out of it. Hi, Diane. Hi. Um, I was just wondering, what do you dislike most about the Hollywood industry, and how would you change it? It's very corporate. You know, the big studios um, make movies based on numbers and not based on creativity. Of, of course, you have wonderful films, um, 
you know, especially for Oscar seasons, you know, they do make beautiful films. But in general, the, the vast majority, those big studios are run by corporations that have nothing to do with movies and, and directors and what, you know, creative people. So that's something that's very difficult sometimes to understand. You know, you, you get scripts and they have these lists with uh, what an actor is worth. And they hire people based on that. Um, and then if that person's not available, you know, they go down the list. And I find that incredibly distasteful. <laughs> you know, com comparing art to numbers, t in my opinion, is, is you know, it's always a not a good path to take. Um, I know this is a stretch, but if we look at what it takes to run a successful business, you know, like success, organization, achievement, management, execution, compartmentalization, efficiency, profit, probability, structure, those are generally things associated with TE and her attitude towards those things, even though this is how Hollywood is, can be looked at as polar TE. And you know, like I said, it's it's a very masochist. What's the word in English? Maso masochistic. Masochistic. Mas yeah. There you go. Industry. I to this day, um, you know, there's very few women, um, few women in in a position to make a film. You know, it's usually always the male character that gets cast first. There are very few women that can command to be cast. And I, I think it's also kind of weird that ma men get a word to say of who will be their partner. I think that's very odd. So that's, but you know, I, I don't know if I can change it. It is what it is, and I'm just one person. But I think you change it by, like I said, generating your, your own content by, um, you know, really hiring good people other than women, this is not, not just women, but I'm saying, you know, trying to make content that, that shows us in a, in a different light and that nobody can say no to. All right, guys, I'm going to wrap it up with the old, it is what it is, what it be, what it do. If you found this video helpful or interesting, or you just enjoyed it, make sure to like and subscribe, leave a comment. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.